Good evening. My name is Kevin Davani, Total Bot Podcast, Total Bitcoin Podcast. Um, I'm going to introduce, even though you've already been introduced, except Sven. I'm going to do a brief interview, a uh, brief introduction. Uh, Sven, I'm going to start with you, with the youngest one, 23-year-old <laughs> Sven Schneiders, who um, is, uh, has a spe spectrum of research interests and is a writer of really fascinating in, uh, articles and essays, uh, partially also based on Austin economics, limitlesscuriosity.com, and he's organizer of the Bitcoin Vienna meetups. Um, Mr. Mark Justin Wallek um, from Liechtenstein. Uh, you are uh, from Incrementum, wealth management and investment funds. And uh, you bring out also, you know, you publish a series of reports in gold, we trust, and crypto research. Um, Mr. Manuel Anders is, um, is um, one of the uh, senior economists, FX analyst of Bayern Landesbank. He is, his research interest is Bitcoin metrics or Bitcoin metrics. And um, he, has, he has a degree in economics, master's degree, and also ranked as one of the best FX analysts worldwide by Bloomberg uh, several times. Thorsten Polite uh, is one of my favorite <laughs> authors and, um, and scholars and researchers. He is, uh, his latest book, which I really can recommend, is Mit Geld zur Weltherrschaft, with Money to World Dominance. And um, yeah, you're the chief economist of um, Degusa, the largest uh, precious metal um, company in Europe. And yeah, so what I want to start off is we've been, uh, we've been having you know, great presentations on Bitcoin and gold. So I would love to start off with, the, with a quote from the Austrian economist Hayek, which he said, a couple of decades ago, I do not believe we shall ever have a good money again before we take the thing out of the hands of government. That is, we cannot take it violently out of the hands of government. All we can do is by some sly roundabout way introduce something that they cannot stop. So that was Hayek, and I just demonstrate his comprehension of the root problems, the structural problems, which also your book uh, with money to world dominance uh, with razor-sharp arguments really uh, demonstrates and with logical and rational arguments. Would you like, Mr. Paulette, maybe start off, what, uh, what kind of monetary properties, fundamental properties, should a money have in, order in, in a free market society? Thank you. Well, I think most people would prefer a kind of money that is scarce, that is homogenous, so it's of the same quality, each unit is comparable, um, and it is transportable, it, it, it's durable, it's um, a trans transportable, uh, mintable, so divisible in small units, and it also has to have a relatively high exchange value per unit. That is at least what we can learn from monetary history. Whenever people had the freedom to choose their money, they were looking for these kinds of properties. And in the competition among goods for serving as money, people decided on gold or silver or even copper, because these precious metals, in comparison with available, go available other goods uh, back then, uh, obviously were the preferred means of payment. And now we live in a world where we have lots of technological innovations, and for instance, Bitcoin has to some, to some degree uh, all these properties as well, like precious metals and gold. For instance, uh, we have a constant, basically constant supply sooner or later as far as the output of Bitcoin is concerned. Uh, the thing is, um, beyond government reach, like gold, you know, you have to produce it, it's costly, governments cannot increase the supply of gold at will, and so there are strong similarities. Um, the big difference is, of course, gold is a physical, uh, physically available unit, whereas Bitcoin is a digital unit. And from my point of view, I think the matter can only be decided 
by a free market in money, to give people the free choice what kind of money they would like to use in their daily transactions for storing uh, of value purposes, for the means of deferred payments. So free market in money should, from my point of view, decide the matter. And the free market in money is nothing fancy, so to speak, and I try to outline that in my talk, because the free market in money is basically what I call monetary enlightenment, where people are free to decide what they would like to do with their financial assets, with their lives, and uh, I think exactly the, the concept of a free market in money should settle uh, the issue. Do you think there are fundamental problems with gold? Uh, maybe uh, some other participant can uh, contribute to this discussion. Um, when it comes to um, uh, divisibility, fungibility, transferring via electronic medium such as the internet, can I do this with gold? So maybe one of you could complement this discussion. Um. Mr. Valley? So. Uh, I, I, I do think um, that the transferability and the divisibility is, is, is not such a big issue. It sometimes is brought up, but gold can be divided into very small increments in reality. So uh, I, I think that's not a, a huge edge relative to, to Bitcoin. Um, but what I do think is um, it leans itself, and also again that I think one can learn from monetary history, it leans itself more to centralization. So it is generally, or it always was more centralized, going back to a bimetal standard, which then was, uh, for instance, in the US, there was a movement during the turn of last century to, 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 to actually go to the gold standard but not because there were so, such hard money guys, uh, but uh, I think that people and banks and influential people wanted to have basically their hands on the gold, and that was also the time when they started to, to make this huge 12.5 kilo bars. Nobody can carry this thing around. So uh, uh, that, uh, that I think would be an, uh, an advantage of, for instance, a digital uh, gold. But, 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 but other than that, I think uh, technically speaking, Gold has no disadvantage in that, on that end. Um, Mr. Anders or Mr. Schneiders, what do you think uh, would be the fundamental problems with, when, we see, when we look at the commonalities and differences, fundamental properties, monetary properties? Yeah, I think it, I agree with all, all what has been said already, but I think the decentralization aspect is extremely underrated. So if you look at monetary history, and you see the, the current system, the fiat system we have right now, is at least in my view and many others, the result of the failure of the gold system. Because you cannot verify gold, as we've heard already in some great talks, you cannot verify gold by yourself cheaply. You have to trust a third party to do it. And if you want to store large amounts of gold, you have to trust the bank. So these, these two really big problems which I don't see how gold can overcome because it's, it's just because of the physical nature of gold. These two problems lead to centralization as we've heard and that's where the government comes in and just can pressure these central points, these few central points and then the gold standard basically ended and we cannot get this control back as we've heard with this great quote. There is no, we don't have the means violently to take it out of the hands of government. That's a really naive view and obviously the government won't adapt a great monetary policy so that's also not an option. So I think the only option as has been argued uh, to, to get this free market and to, to really, really have this awesome economics uh, world we want is with Bitcoin because only with Bitcoin you can, secure every, you can secure your coins by yourself and you also can verify everything by yourself with your own note really cheaply and that's, that's the, the major difference. I, I haven't seen anyone basically argue against it or ha bring up any innovation in gold which would, uh, which would basically like make it on par with Bitcoin, let's say. 
Thank you. Mr. Andish, do you have any comment? Um, yeah, I agree with that. And actually, what you see with a uh, goal that it's the technology or the innovations go in the direction that it's getting easier and easier to fake gold. Um, so it's not even getting better, it's actually getting worse. So, and as I said in my talk, I mean, the only real way to validate whether you have uh, real gold is uh, with a smelting furnace. And I don't know whether you have a smelting furnace for, for your gold or whether whoever does this. But um, yeah, but it, you, if you want to compare full validation, so you, you have to, to compare apples with apples. So and if you want to uh, validate, um, or if you compare it with a full validation of a full node in a Bitcoin network, the, the only analogy is smelting furnace. There is the full validation. If you're talking not probabilistic, saying, okay, this method for like a, f a few hundred euros or something um, with electricity and stuff like this is 90% correct, I want 100%. Yeah, Not so it's about the real-time validation that everybody, anybody who has a full node can verify, validate, right, compared to gold. I mean, the question is, how do I assay, how do I validate the purity, authenticity of gold every time? Maybe, Mr. Anders, next time you're in Frankfurt, I'm going to invite you to uh, our people who, you know, make sure that the gold that is being bought from customers and is being sold to customers uh, has uh, the right fineness and it's pure gold. Uh, it's it's a, very, a relatively easy uh, undertaking and you don't have to smelt all the bars and coins to prove whether it's 100% uh, quality of gold that you would expect. And on top of that, I said I'm not going to talk about my book. You did it. Well, uh, but, uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, 10 years ago, 10 years, around about 10 years ago, I, I, I did a book. It's called Monetary Reform. And uh, in that book, I tried to outline how a, a free market banking industry would look like, where you would have credit banks on the one hand and deposit banks on the other hand. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a world where we had, would have, let's assume, people would decide to go for gold, then you would have gold deposit banks. You would just deposit your gold in the form of bars or coins or whatever, and then you would get on your iPhone or your Android Sony system an and, and, and application where you can actually see how many ounces or grams of gold you have in your account and then you can easily bank without moving any physical gold. That's basically the underlying idea. Of course you have a counterparty risk but then you have competition and these deposits banks would compete for reputation for best quality like it is in the case of let's say uh, uh, holiday traveling and air, air, aircraft producers etc. The point I think you raised is very, a very important one, and that is the role of government. You know, you, it's very unlikely that we get sound money if we don't roll back the state. If you support Bitcoin, you, you may know or you may not, not know that you actually have to advocate the rolling back of the state. The state is the territorial monopolist of coercion. It is the, the final decision maker about conflicts which occur amongst his people and the conflicts between the people and the state itself can be decided by the state. And you can imagine what the outcome will be. The state will become ever more powerful. And um, that is, I think, an aspect that we shouldn't ignore if we really want to advocate for sound money. Whether it's Bitcoin or gold or silver or whatever, we have to roll back the state in, in the format we, we, are, we know it today as a territorial monopolist. I think that is basically the real challenge of... Yeah of the issue we, we, we discuss. Can I just add sure. something? Because uh, I will um, invite gladly 
Professor Pola to Nuremberg, where Bayern is doing the validation of gold, and we are doing it like this. I know we don't, we are not supposed to shill uh, any business, but the Bayern is also one of the biggest uh, gold dealer in Europe. So I didn't get this information from random sources, but from those people who are really into it. And well, uh, perhaps uh, we talk about this later. But the point is, full validation, 100%, is the only way. Is is this? There is no other way. Then you don't have 100%. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing if you want to have 100% validation of gold? What are you doing at Degusta? Degusta, what are you doing there? Well, the, the, you know, we sell bars uh, with the imprint of Degusta, and they uh, get the best prices. <laughs> when, you, when, when you come and sell a bar to Degusta, and it's, you know, the imprint is Degusta, you're, you're fine. If you come with a bar with uh, the imprint of Commerzbank or UBS or uh, Bayern LB, we're going to smell it. <laughs> Uh -huh. I see. Okay. But not because we don't trust, uh, you know, the fineness or the weight of, of the bar, but just because we cannot resell it. It's like a branding right. of, of the and, so the... and the, I, I'm sure UBS will do the same. You know, they're going to smelt our bars. <laughs> but um, there are ways to, to test the, the quality of the, of, of the bar. We buy, for instance, Kruger Runs and Philharmonics mm -hmm. uh, from Austria, and we don't smell them. We buy from the German Kaiserreich uh, uh, lots of coins, thousands of them. We don't smell them because our numismatic experts can exactly tell you about the quality of these coins. Yes, they can approximate it's probabilistic. I'm talking about 100%. If you want to compare it to the full node, perhaps you probably don't know the full validation process of the full node. That's probably, the, I don't know, but we are talking about 100%. And of course you are not doing this, probably Binance is also not doing it also only on demand because it's not economically viable to do this. If you have an imprint and you're trusting in it, of course you're not doing it. But his point was that this is the major advantage between gold and Bitcoin that you have a way for 150 euros to have 100% certainty, 100% and with gold it costs 700,000 to have 100%, probably less for 60, 70, 80, 90 percent. Yeah. Okay. I think you are not an expert at, at the end of the day in terms of proving the, the quality of a certain piece of precious metals, nor I am. We're going to settle that. We, uh, I come to your place and you come to my place. Um, you don't want to talk with our gold dealer. He's not a nice guy. I have a lot of discussion with him. That's the only thing that we agree uh, on because he's unhappy with uh, our Bitcoin research. So yeah. that's the only but thing. But he is going to love to talk to me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but be that as it may, I mean, to, to, um, there are various um, qualities a, a good must have to, to become money, you know? The, 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 the quality and the fineness and the weight of a certain piece of gold or silver is one issue. And um, the other issue is, for instance, the, um, the time-tested qualities, you know. For instance, gold is with us for more than 5,000 years. And there were many innovations as far as the monetary system was concerned and is concerned and um, we simply don't know and I and I take the position of advocating a free market in money you, you would never find me in a, in a talk or presentation calling for a gold standard mm. you wouldn't you wouldn't as far as I remember and I'm you know over 50 now <laughs> maybe when I was young I did it but I don't do it anymore I think that issue should be decided by the free market. And I cannot give you the answer, but I think it's important to have a free market. And personally, I have a certain inclination, and that is towards precious metals. Yeah, we are all buys somehow, so I'm a Bitcoin buy, so this is why I wanted to go through the fundamental monetary properties, because yes, if it's a free market, the people will then be attracted, gravitated towards the best money, which has the best monetary properties, and that is, you know, definitely finite scarcity, or in, in Gold's case, relative scarcity, fungibility, divisibility, portability, recognizability, uh, there's a list of, um, that's actually you, you uh, listed also in your book, and what I find interesting is that, uh, Mr. Pollitt, you, um, 
you you say in your book you you mention you know sort of uh, cryptocurrency in, in this case Bitcoin you know is something revolutionary and it could it could mean it could really mean the end of the state, um, uh, which the opposite would be uh, a fiat world currency and a fiat world government and th the potential is there if if. The f if there is not an, a, you know, an a spontaneous emergence of a, of a free market, would it be gold and or Bitcoin? Maybe one, one more aspect, because we talked about the validation of, of the quality of the underlying precious metal. That is one, one issue, certainly, from the, an important one from the point of view of money users. Another important aspect is, of course, uh, the increase in the quantity of money. There might be people who would love to have a money that increases relatively small rates over time, like gold, for instance. Gold, the gold supply on this world increases by around about 2% on average mm -hmm. in the last 100 years. It may be that people decide on having a money that increases slight, um, a quantity of money that increases slightly, that they would prefer such a money over a constant supply like Bitcoin. I don't know. I'm just saying that is another aspect which will decide about what m money will be might become in a free market. And um, yes, I, I think if, if Bitcoin would really get its breakthrough and people would flock to Bitcoin, and all transactions would, be, would become anonymous, the state would no longer have the possibility to tax turnovers, incomes, and whatever. The, the, the state as we know it today, as a tax uh, receiver, would, would basically come to an end. Yeah, that and we would, would have then a private contractual society, yes, a private absolutely. Small, right? Then a, a completely right. new system right. uh, would be put in place. That's, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, I, would, I would agree, and I, I wanted to add what has been said before, that we won't have a new, new monetary system. Let's, let's say, a gold standard or whatever, without rolling back the state, as, uh, as it was said here. But I, don't, I think it's naive to think this is possible with, let's say, the, the conventional mechanisms we have. So we cannot vote to make the state smaller. We can try, but it's, it's really difficult. And it's, I think naive to think it's going to happen this way. That's why people who are advocating for Bitcoin are basically saying, we're going to build this alternative structure and the, the, the state doesn't have any more money to finance itself and then it's going to shrink by, by itself because no money is going to be given to the state. And thinking it's going to be the reverse order that we can shrink the state and then implement a new monetary uh, sound money system is, I don't think it's feasible. And to the uh, race point that some people might prefer 1% inflation currency, 2% inflation cur currency, that might be true, obviously, and everyone is advocating for free market money. Uh, competition is great, but as we've seen, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand why someone would hold an asset over a long time which has an inflation rate of 1% or 2% if you could hold an asset which doesn't have an inflation rate at all, which will be Bitcoin when all the 21 million will be mined. So I don't see the need for, a, for a even 1% or 2% inflation rate, but that's, that's probably going to be proven if we have this free market, which I'm obviously advocating also for. All right. Um, I have a bunch of uh, you know, questions myself, but I think it's, we should maybe transition to the questions uh, from the audience. Um, I'm just going to take the first one, get it out of the way. How does Bitcoin, how does mining of gold, how does mining of gold compare to mining of Bitcoin in terms of negative ecological impact? Uh, actually, I, um, we did a presentation concerning this and there are estimates that the mining currently of gold takes around three times uh, the energy compared to the mining, that, uh, the energy that is spend to mine uh, Bitcoin. But obviously this could change, this is uh, and also rough estimates, but just think that gold is just mined like this without any energy. And the, the, yeah, For me, the, the more interesting point here is 
the difference that with gold you have the case that you need to carry your energy to the mining facilities, to the mines, and with Bitcoin you are actually mining where, um, where the energy is the cheapest. The excessive energy that is actually and the renewable yeah, energy in most exactly. cases, right? So the so. also what kind of energy is used also very important. Right. So it's first the amount is less, much mm -hmm. less, and also what types of energy are used, it's more in favor of uh, Bitcoin because of the last reason that I mentioned. Right. Yeah, I agree and I would add you have to not only look at mining, mining gold and mining Bitcoin, you also have to look at transactions. And transactions obviously cost way, lo way less energy in Bitcoin than it costs to really take the physical gold and ship it somewhere. That's really costly and this is also something that is often forgotten if you look at the impact of mining only. I mean, to, I think it took three years to get the uh, uh, gold back from that. I'm told it could have been made possible in three months, but... Now, Mr. Wing, I realize, you know, to put in these Bitcoin propaganda people, <laughs> you know... <laughs> they just yeah. facts. facts. You know, I think it's, you know, it's very naive to, to come up with numbers about what does it costs to produce a certain good. I mean, we live in an, an economy where people have a certain demand and producers try to, to serve the customers. You know, like people love to go for holidays to South America and we have airlines, you know, who offers flights from Frankfurt and London to Buenos Aires, you know, for the enjoyment of the people. And you may well say, okay, you do not like people traveling from Frankfurt and London for making holidays in, uh, uh, what was that? Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but if you come up with such a statement, you, uh, you, you come up with a dictatorial statement because I don't like that you travel there and therefore it is bad what you're doing. I mean, if it, it, sound money has a certain price, you know, if you dig gold, you would do that only if your return on investment is at least at, as high as investing in whatever Apple stocks or production sites in China. It competes, the production of gold competes in a free market with the production of all other things. And um, just as a return to your provocative statement, I mean, do you know how many people, how many families make their living in working in mines? Earning incomes, earning incomes to sustain their families. And if you... No, I if, don't know. Yeah, I, I couldn't answer that question as well. Yeah, yeah. And I but don't know I'm about the toxic is, exposure. Uh, yeah, you know, to I, I, what I'm saying is, I mean, we, we're talking about a free market product, so to speak, and there are people who, who love to demand gold, and there are people who love to produce gold and mine gold and make a living from it. And um, this is a fair situation, as far as I can see, and I think if you point out there's a certain bill to be paid for producing gold that leads us into a completely wrong direction. Right. I mean, I don't know why um, this uh, just stating the facts is, um, um, I didn't want, uh, so the point is, for me, if you have uh, two sound money technologies and you have one which uses a different set of energies which are more beneficial, has less risks, then why don't you choose the, the, the one with, um, or, I mean, not on a personal level, I think it will a society or humankind would converge anyway towards the more efficient one. Um, but I found it ex extremely interesting because I was actually expecting when uh, looking at the numbers there that Bitcoin would uh, use much more energy than, than gold. So, well, May I add, uh, I think generally speaking uh, you don't actually need new gold mined to actually sustain a gold standard because the fact that the new gold which is mined 
is only so small in, in relatively speaking to the already existing gold, you're not dependent to have these, this gold. But it will be a byproduct if you reinstate theoretically whatever, if the market, if we ever have such a thing, uh, for, for free money chooses gold, then the monetary premium will rise and then these activities will be here, obviously, I guess. Um, but, but to your point, and I think it is a valid one, or an interesting one, um, I think it's, it's, it's good to state in, in regard to Bitcoin mining that uh, that is excess energy which is consumed. Uh, so so the, the total number of watts or whatever the energy consumption uh, is, is in my view not the relevant, relative, uh, the relevant number. The, 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 relative, the, the relevant thing to, to look is what kind of energy is consumed and energy cannot be transported Electricity can, cannot be transported easily uh, uh, through, through long distance. Uh, it cannot be stored and so on. So uh, one can see uh, Bitcoin also to some extent uh, as, as like a global um, energy arbitrage. Uh, so if some, at some places there is a very uh, cheap energy which cannot be trans uh, transferred to, to urban places, you mine it. And, and, and you have a monetary value, which is basically like energy, I think. Uh, and you can transform this, uh, transfer this energy very easily via the Bitcoin network. And, and, and this is, I think, an interesting thought, which I just wanted to also stress here. But, but on the other hand, I agree with, with Thorsten. This is something which is overlooked. Um, I, I know somebody, uh, somebody who, who wrote the so-called Schwarzbuch Gold, so uh, very critical analysis on the mining situation, and even she, the author, said the, the situations aren't uh, fun there, but a lot of countries who are dependent on that, that if you would take that away from them, you wouldn't actually enhance the situation of the local local people. So these are quite complex uh, questions. I think one shouldn't, shouldn't look uh, at this uh, too, too, too simplistically. And, and again, I mean, there are many things we consume, we produce, where, where I'm inclined to say, well, is that really necessary? Is the energy we, we use up for producing this stuff really necessary? But, okay, this is my personal point of view, but I would never ever come up with prohibiting, you know, these things in a free market society. The question is what kind of consequent damages yeah, does the sure. fiat system... I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's the right of the, of, the, of the consumer and the producer to come up with the production of this good. I mean, this is what the free market is all about. And if Bitcoin causes a lot of energy and people love to get hold of uh, ever more uh, uh, units of Bitcoin, so we have to agree to, you know, machines, uh, you know, taking up a lot of uh, electricity. That's it. That I, I don't think, I, I, I wouldn't come up with a moral, you know, judgment about it. I mean, this is the result of a free market society. And if you don't want a free market society, then you go for communism. And in communism, you can, you know, go for, 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 for prohibitions. You know, you can put people in camps who would love to get hold of Bitcoin. You know, that's, that's the alternative. And this argumentation, you know, this is just my purpose <laughs> to, to lay bare the underlying principles. Um, and, and, but, but back to, to, um, to, 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 to the money thing, I, I, again, we don't know the technological properties people would prefer, and getting a free market in money is really desirable. And if you say we cannot roll back the government, then we are in deep trouble. And you are a young guy, and um, I was a young guy many years ago, and there was still the Berlin Wall, and my teachers in school told me, Oh, this wall, you know, will never come down. Of course, he was a communist teacher. <laughs> I realized that many years later, and then I was in Portugal, and then on the 9th of November 1989, I was looking, I was on the beach, you know, cafe bar, and there was a TV, and I saw many people on this Berlin Wall, you know, with, with, with hammering down the, the, you know, plugging holes into the wall, and I... I couldn't really understand what was happening, you know. And sometimes things happen because they cannot be sustained. And it catches most people by surprise when it, when it occurs. 
And um, all I'm saying is I cannot promise you <laughs> that this is gonna happen. But um, if we adhere to the idea of enlightenment, like the Prussian philosopher Immanuel Kant told us, and if we want to improve the living conditions on this planet, if we want higher living standards for many people, fewer wars, better health for the people, then we have to get, get rid of the state as much as possible. And so I encourage you, all of you, to embrace this idea that this might be possible someday, and um, in hand in hand, the opportunity for better money, uh, for better money would arise. Uh, I, I completely agree. Uh, I, I think my, my argument just was, uh, Bitcoin is actually fulfilling this role. Bitcoin is actually trying to uh, trying to shrink the state, trying to get trying to get uh, some freedom back for for the people. I I don't see. I mean, I hope there is, but I don't see any other way to do it. I don't I don't see um, people in in power, let's say, giving up their power voluntarily because they they think it's such a great thing that that people should have more liberty, let's say. I, I think Bitcoin is the only way, and this is... I'm not obviously uh, against shrinking the government, I'm just... I think my, my, my route is different, let's say. If I may add something also, I, I, I also again, I agree, but I, I think from a practical point of view, we are nowhere close, obviously, <laughs> to, to getting rid of the state. And I also am not 100% convinced if, if that is actually the, the right way to put it. And uh, I would, I guess you would agree, but I would say rather I would uh, emphasize on decentralizing uh, governance. Uh, which is probably a similar thing, but I think it's less radical uh, for, for a lot of people uh, and who cannot imagine that there is no state. But well, you actually want to localize governance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why I'm also sim sim sympathetic to, to Bitcoin from that point of view, because it's obviously a decentralized system, and that's what you want to have on, on a monetary view, and that's what you also want to have on, on a government. Yeah. point of view. Um, well, let me, let me just uh, add some because there's a question, uh, maybe I want to tie this in with my personal question because uh, your book, uh, Mr. Paulette, you know, it, it lays out the real structural problems without euphemism. Uh, it, it doesn't circumvent it, there's no, you know, there's like rational, logical deductions and facts. So, um, it's a waste of energy fighting against the established system. So we create new structures and systems so the old ones become obsolete. So, we have, so when we have principles of aggression, violence, and uh, coercion committed uh, by the state, nation, state, government, in collusion, I don't know who owns what, whom, is it the central bank in control of the governments or the governments in control of the... So it's a holy grail or the holiest grail of all taboos. So the fastest way to defund the state by Alex Vetsky, thank you for the question, uh, what is the fastest way to defund the state peacefully? Well, if, if, if you guys come up with a perfect Bitcoin, <laughs> for instance... We have it already. We yeah. have it. Okay. <laughs> Then we are close, <laughs> then we are close, fasten your seatbelts. Well, I would say, um, you know, an economist which influenced my thinking very much comes from Vienna, from, from your city, uh, Ludwig von Mises. And uh, often I'm asked, you know, what, what did this guy do? What, what did impress you most? And I, I'm inclined to say, well, he understood that our actions, that human actions, are basically driven by ideas. We do things because we have a certain idea of how it plays out, you know. We embrace socialism once we get convinced that it creates a better world, a more social world, then people go for socialism. And if they have the idea, embrace the idea that a free market system, capitalism, brings peace and prosperity, they will go for it. So at the heart of human action, at the heart of human development on this globe are ideas. That would be the answer given by Ludwig von Mises. And I, I think he is right for logical reasons. 
and we have to change the ideas. And what you guys do with your conference is hammering home better ideas. You are in the business of spreading and making spreading better ideas, making people familiar that there are other solutions, better solutions for the problems they would love to solve. And I think that's the way forward. If we don't succeed, I think we're going to end up with a world currency, a world central bank, and a world totalitarian state. I think this is pretty obvious, and this is not a gloomy scenario, it's just a logical deduction. If we continue on this planet, the way we handle political issues, the monetary system, the banking industry, we're going to end up in deep, deep trouble. And so, more than ever, it's important to come up with good ideas. And that's one reason why I think it's very important to support the Bitcoin community, or the crypto unit community, because I think they play an essential role in providing good ideas, to spread good, spreading good ideas, and it doesn't matter whether I'm a gold fan or a silver fan, or Mark Walek is, is a determined gold uh, bug. Uh, it, it, it's all about Not changing, only. Not changing only. ideas. Changing ideas. I think that's the most powerful instrument and tool we have. And um, from little what I gathered uh, in the panel discussion this morning, uh, it seems to me that central banks and government representatives don't have convincing answers. You know, they have certain phrases they repeat, and, and they do it greatly <laughs> and effectively, but they don't live up to, the, uh, to our convincing argumentation. And that is something I realize. So we are in a stronger position, and if we succeed in getting you know, better ideas, uh, making the, the greater public aware that there are better ideas, we're going to succeed. And you are a young guy, and maybe uh, what Mark Walek said is the first step towards getting rid of the governments that we see secessions. Like we see in the European Union, Great Britain gets out, and maybe we see something similar in Spain, maybe the Scots, I don't know, maybe Bavaria and Germany, for instance, also in the United States, there are also secessionary developments. Burgenland in Austria. Yeah, maybe that is the step towards rolling back the state. Uh, I, I agree, I, I hope, I, I share the same hopes, and I do think with events like this, we can convince more people about, like, our ideas are better, our arguments are better, that's obviously what I think, but the, the, the beauty behind Bitcoin is that you don't have to convince everyone. You can build this, this alternative monetary system, and even if the, all of the central bankers uh, come here and listen to all of these beautiful arguments and they don't, they don't believe it, they, they are not convinced, it doesn't matter. That's, that's the beautiful thing thing, it cannot be stopped, even if all of those uh, great people in uh, positions of power think it should be stopped or it should, it's the wrong idea, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Thank you so much to all the discussion, panel discussion participants. I think we've really empowered and educated our audience and the general public on the principles of Bitcoin and gold. Thank you so much. <laughs>